Bujidi Molinawal and Gidgety Gore, good morning and thank you in the language of the Gadigal people. My name is Chris Nunn. My job is Head of Sustainability for AMP Capital Real Estate and I'm also the current chair of the board of the Australian Passive House Association. And this is a video walkthrough of our new house at 10 Stokes Avenue in Asquith in Sydney's North. You can see that there's a time lapse that we're working through uh, and then there's a walkthrough. So you can see the foundations being laid here. This is a slab on ground. And in Sydney, the Passive House Planning Package software demonstrated that having a slab on ground uninsulated means that there's a significant cooling benefit from the stable ground temperature in summer. So uh, unlike passive houses in colder climates, which typically have an insulated slab, the slab is uninsulated here in Sydney. And then the ground slab goes in for the garage, the shed, which has a green roof on it and you can see the, the site prep works continuing. Scaffolding goes up. This is a modular wall and roof assembly provided by Carbon Light, uh, who, do mod, who are a certified passive house construction system based in Victoria. You can see the modular wall and roof panels going on. It only took three days for the structure to come together. The blue on the outside is the weatherproof membrane. And you can see the battens, which provide a, a bit of a services cavity um, to mount the um, external weather text cladding on and likewise inside there's a 40 mil batten uh, to mount the plasterboard on um, to protect the airtight membrane. The airtight membrane is the, the white material and you'll see that later in the walkthrough. And you can see the roof going on here, big solar array goes on, we've got a green roof over the shed so you'll see the, the waterproof membrane going down and then the, the soil and turf being laid on the green roof and the, the big PV array going in. You've got external shading on the western windows which you can see above the shed there, one large uh, access window which is really access for maintenance of the green roof and another one a, a bedroom window. Those two windows face west so they've got external blinds. You can also see on the north facade that we're looking at the front elevation of the house, there's vertical shading fins on the sides and a horizontal shading fin on um, between ground and first floor and they have been carefully sort of calculated to provide um, shading from peak summer sun but allow some of the winter sun in through the north facade. Walkthrough. This is me using a three-dimensional camera. And the 3D camera allows me to zoom in, zoom out, focus on various parts of the walkthrough as I'm walking around the building. So we've got some big planter beds in the front for fruit trees. And then we're in the front door is quite special. This is a passive house door with beautiful seals, but it's also a very low threshold that complies with the Livable Housing Australia silver standard. These are the beautiful passive house windows, tilt and turn windows. So you tilt the handle all the way around to open the window wide and you can see the beautiful double seals there that ensure that when the window is closed you get an airtight seal so that the mechanical ventilation with heat recovery unit can provide continuous fresh air without leakage. Then you turn the handle horizontally and you get this lovely tilt motion where the top opens a crack and you can get some sort of trickle ventilation on a nice day without opening the window super wide. So it's got those three positions on all the windows. And then you just close the window, ratchet it round and it seals tightly with, with locks that and that engage at various points around the window to complete the seal. This is the uh, guest ensuite bathroom in the guest bedroom. Um, nice little bathroom there. This is also Livable Housing Australia wheelchair accessible, uh, wider areas around the toilet shower. This is the gym room which we've got. Nice big double doors opening onto the, um, the side path there. Little WC downstairs. Uh, the lovely big staircase. And this is the main living, dining and kitchen space with lots of indirect LED lighting, um, some built-in joinery for the TV, ceiling fans, uh, an LED trougher, some lovely big windows. Uh, this is into the laundry and this is the, the real heart of a passive house, the mechanical ventilation and heat recovery unit that provides a continuous flow of fresh air. So you can see the fans working, it's on setting two, it's monitoring the temperature and airflow. These are the filters, this is uh, an F7 you know, high grade filter that you can see is already quite dirty after just a month of occupation. It's, um, it's protected us from a lot of dust and particulates by filtering the incoming air that's coming in through those grey, large, insulated 
air intake and exhaust tubes and then these white tubes are what distributes the air from the MVHR out to all the rooms and then extracts them back from the key points. This is a special, this is a HEPA filter cassette. I can open those thumb screws, insert a HEPA filter during a bushfire to remove all the particulate pollution you get with a bushfire. Here's a bit of a walk around, that's the outside air intake duct, it's insulated it goes out um, to the side of the house here through the shed and you can see the intake grill there so that is where the air comes into the MVHR unit and this other grill up on the side of the house there is where the exhaust is exhausted once it's done its heat transfer inside the MVHR unit it's exhausted outside so that MVHR unit really does provide a very efficient way to provide continuous filtered fresh air to the whole house and that's one of the special things about passive house you also saw those nice um, transparent rear shed doors um, and the front shed door with the glazing panel this is the kitchen induction cooktop of course is an all-electric house so electric oven and electric uh, cooktop um, electric appliances built-in microwave there nice new fancy sink and lovely kitchen which we're loving um, and out the big double doors to the back um, this is the rear elevation a nice big backyard trampoline kids cubby house that I'm building um, you can see the weather text facade panels there this is native Australian hardwood timber offcuts to get pressed into panels to make a zero carbon um, cladding system you can see there it's got a sort of um, weatherboard type effect that we've oriented vertically this is a solar inverter and back inside Again, looking at the seals as you come in through the double doors and closing the handle upwards to engage the locks that create the seal and, and sort of mechanically pull the doors and windows closed to, to effect a really nice tight airtight seal to complement the, the airtight sealing uh, of the entire fabric. So up the stairs into the kids' rumpus room, a nice view out to the north there, and this is the west-facing access uh, arrangement to get out onto the green roof. It's not a habitable zone, this green roof. This is really just provided uh, access for maintenance um, to do weeding and, and tend the beehives, which I intend to have up here. But you can see it's quite a big space. I've got the irrigation lines down there. It's a purple pipe irrigation network across this site. Um, we've got two 5,000 litre rainwater tanks buried under the driveway, which supply the irrigation to the site. Um, you can see these side um, little sprayers you might be able to see I'm just zooming in here the this is a drencher system in the event of a bushfire we've got 12 surface mounted uh, facade drenchers that can provide a, a mist to prevent against ember attack during a bushfire these are the heat rejection units for the sand and hot water heat pump and the external condenser for the air conditioning unit um, little water supply for the for the top and a controller box for the irrigation system for the green roof. This is the 20 kilowatt solar array. So we've got a, a completely covered north elevation on our roof here, um, which has been deliberately, you can see the pitch of the roof is longer in this orientation versus the rear orientation to the south to accommodate a greater amount of solar on the roof. 20 kilowatts, it's probably oversized, as you'd imagine for a passive house, the load isn't that big, but we intend to export it and be part of a, a community solar virtual power plant and export um, into the grid and, and receive a benefit from that. Here's the Western, um, automated external blind and a bit of a view of the the western shading fin and the horizontal shading fin which I mentioned earlier into the master bedroom ceiling fans throughout um, big north facing front elevation window there and a nice high level east facing window into the walk-in robe again with natural daylight to the east uh, frosted window there lovely built-in joinery and the master ensuite with um, these backlit LED vanities and uh, a special Japanese toilet. Um, and this is one of the things I really love, the Felton digital smart flow um, controller for the master ensuite shower. It's a digital shower that you can control the temperature and it gives you the flow rate and, or, or rather the amount of water that you've used in the shower. So you just press it to turn it on and then adjust the temperature by rotating that little wheel. And this is a Toto um, toilet, so Japanese um, bidet toilet, love those. Um, and there's the, that is the, um, the boost button for the MVHR. So if you're having a shower and you're producing a lot of condensation, press the boost button and for half an hour the MVHR will turn on to a higher setting and extract air at a higher rate so that you're not getting any condensation inside. One of the kids bedrooms, that's the west facing window which also has an external shade on it, again ceiling fans throughout, nice LED backlit kids bookshelf and toy shelf, 
nice view of the stairs. Native Australian black butt timber flooring and hardwood timber stairs. Second kid's bedroom, they're all the same size, prevent arguments. Um, lots of storage, as you can see. Third kid's bedroom, Frankie, our daughter, lives in this one. Um, but yeah, really nice. Uh, kids' bathroom, big bath, another Japanese bidet toilet, um, low flow shower, of course. Um, yeah, nice bathroom. And then, yeah, just showing off the bidet toilet, touch button, lifts the lid, and um, has a sort of special vortex flushing mechanism as well, which is pretty cool. And up into the attic, this is to show the airtight membrane. So you can see this Intello um, membrane. It's a vapor permeable airtight membrane. So it doesn't let any condensation accumulate in interstitially in the fabric, um, but it's airtight and you can see the tape that joins those panels there. And they're numbered panels, so you can see that during construction they were numbered and craned into place in all airtight membrane on the inside and the weatherproof membrane on the outside. So the builder has to fix the panels together with screws and then tape over the screw penetrations through the airtight membrane and then tape the join, which is, you know, the black and blue airtight tape you can see. Um, and then you can also see some of the ducting. What the smaller duct there is the aircon. Um, and then the, the white uh, semi-rigid ducting is the distribution and return pipes for each of the... Um, the rooms from the MBHR, the mechanical ventilation with heat recovery system. So really it's not that complicated to install a ventilation system. You can see how the pipes are just running to each room and then extracting from common areas and bathrooms. Um, and this attic space is used as the duct run. And then there's other duct runs that there's one uh, riser that goes up uh, one of our kids' bedrooms just in, hidden in a cupboard um, to get distribution access to, to each room. Another view of the beautiful stairs and the lovely Erco um, pendant lights that we've got, um, really high efficiency, high performance LEDs, bit of flicker there, I think it's just the frame rate of the video. Um, walking past the, the shoe kind of putting on area and the shoe storage area, we, we keep our shoes off in the house. Um, this is just scratching away at the, the lids of the rainwater tanks. You can see they're buried under the driveway. They're the access hatches to the tops of the two rainwater tanks, 10,000 litre storage, and then garden beds there for a Morea hedge out the front, um, in through the garage, uh, bikes, our three-wheeler Nihola that we take the kids, electric cargo bike that we take the kids to school in, and the clothesline, which we use to dry our clothes. This is the automatic irrigation system, um, which has you know a rain gauge and an automated controller that has... Um, that distributes the, the purple pipe irrigation water from the rainwater tank and, um, and the grey water collection system out into the lawn. There's subsurface irrigation system laid under the turf of the lawn and then serving all of the garden beds, including the, the planters near the house and this big planter bed around in the backyard. Building a uh, tree house and the lovely trampoline out the back, nice big backyard, fruit trees um, starting to get planted out in the garden beds and a view of the back ele elevation with the weather text panels. And then we head around the side of the house. This is the passive house dog door, so an airtight dog door. It just has a magnetic seal um, that allows the dog to get in and out but oh maintains the airtight seal so that when the MBHR is, is working um, you don't have a big hole in your airtight facade. Um, dog finds it no problem. It wasn't particularly expensive. Um, provided by Freedom Pet Pass um, out of the US. Um, side view, just walking out on the street, giving a, a view of the east facing elevation and then this west facing elevation. I would say to all those listings, for anyone contemplating building a sustainable house, I'd strongly encourage you to consider checking out Passive House certification, for me, this is the, the global best practice gold standard for sustainable living and, and other non-residential buildings. It provides comfortable indoor temperatures. It provides a guaranteed security in relation to condensation, mould. It will not happen in a passive house. You've got filtered fresh air continuously supplied through the mechanical ventilation with heat recovery unit. So you've always got fresh air, even in winter and in summer when you've got the windows cool closed and you're doing heating or cooling. So there's always fresh air, which you just cannot say about a normal naturally ventilated house. Of course, you can still open the windows on a fine day. It works just like a normal naturally ventilated house. But when it's too hot or it's too cold, you close the doors and windows and you've still got beautiful fresh air. So there's no build-up of particulates, no build-up of CO2 or other indoor air quality issues associated with, with other typologies. So really encourage you to consider a passive house. Uh, for me, 
having the opportunity to do a knockdown rebuild, I really wouldn't consider anything else. I think it's the foundation of, of sustainable houses. It's comfortable, it's high air quality, and it's highly energy efficient. And it's really a great foundation for zero carbon buildings like this one. Thank you.